Hey there kids, welcome to another homework video. Here is module five, lesson 19 homework. And today we're gonna to focus on kites. Um, so kites, if you just imagine a beautiful little kite in the sky and it's got the two sticks and the tail, okay, you are right on uh, in thinking about that. And keep thinking about the way that that kite looks because as we describe what a kite is, the attributes that it has are kind of what give it away. So what are the properties of a kite? We're gonna draw a kite that's not a parallelogram on the grid paper. So we've talked a lot about the attributes that these quadrilaterals have, quad meaning four, and so we've been working with these four-sided shapes. So a kite that is not a parallelogram is going to look a lot like this. So if you use your super fun little grid here uh, to create a kite, it means we have to have two sides that are equal and adjacent, okay? And then we have two other sides that don't have to match these. And since I'm not creating a parallelogram, I can pick a point that's lower down here on this grid, and I'm just gonna go skipping right through all the other, oops, my little thingy moved, sorry. I'm gonna pick a point that goes right through all the other uh, lines. I'm not even gonna use those lines at all. And I'm gonna make my kite here. Okay, so we're just see how they're not necessarily crossing through any points and we're not using any lines because I'm getting to this point down here for my, uh, the vertex point of the bottom two lines. Now these two are equal and adjacent. Adjacent meaning right next to each other and equal meaning the same length. But these two lines that are equal and adjacent are not the same as these two lines that are also next to each other, which is adjacent, but equal to each other and yet different from those two. So this is a kite that is not a parallelogram and so we have to start thinking about what are the properties then of this kite. Well, first of all, it has four sides. Now, since it's not a parallelogram, and if you're thinking about that, um, the hierarchy of quadrilaterals, which is actually, I have to go back for it, the hierarchy of quadrilaterals is terrific to show you the, just plop that down here, Terrific to show you how a kite doesn't necessarily fit into, sorry, that's probably sideways for you, my bad. It doesn't necessarily fit into um, this, this parallelogram design very easily. Look at how it's flopping right over all the outer edge of the trapezoid and the parallelogram and the rectangle. Okay, so the only way that a kite could be one of these is, is if it is a square. Or you could say a square is a kite and a rhombus is a kite because they have two pairs of equal and adjacent sides. Pair one, pair two. Okay, so what are the properties? If they, we know it has four sides, it's gonna have two pairs of equal and adjacent, move this thing out of the way now equal and adjacent sides. Okay, so four sides equal two pairs of equal and adjacent sides. So what does that mean when it's two pairs? That they're adjacent, they have to be touching. They're gonna, be, they're gonna have a vertex point in common, okay? That's what they mean by adjacent. So if you have a square and you say, okay, well those are two sides that are equal and adjacent, and then these two sides are equal and adjacent. That's why this is also a kite, because it has two pairs of equal and adjacent sides. One, two, three, four. They just so happen to all be the same, and that's okay. It doesn't say they have to not match. It just says that we have two and two, and, and a square has two and two, and so does a rhombus. So that's why kites can be squares. Okay, when can a parallelogram also be a kite? Okay, so 
A parallelogram, remember, has to have two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, so two pairs of parallel sides. Now this one is not a parallelogram, okay, because it does not fit the two pairs of parallel sides. So when can a parallelogram also be a kite? You have to make it fit those other uh, uh, descriptions with the attributes. So if I have a rhombus, if it's a rhombus, then it's a kite because again, I have two pairs of equal and adjacent sides. This pair, or you can do like different colors to remind yourself that, hey, these two are next to each other, which means adjacent and they're equal. And then these two, we'll do Christmas colors, woohoo. Okay, and those two, equal and adjacent, same length. This is the same as this, as this, as this. That's a rhombus, but it's also a kite because it has two pairs of, um, sorry, that might be confusing there. The parallelogram has to have two pairs of parallel sides. The only time that a kite could be, a, uh, a parallelogram can be a kite is if it's a rhombus or if it's a square. And then again, if you look at the way that it is constructed, you take your two pairs of equal adjacent sides, and it says nothing about the angles. It's not about the angles here. We're just trying to figure out when a parallelogram can be a kite. Okay, so that's gonna be if it's a rhombus or a square. If it's a rectangle, okay, this side is not equal to this side, so that's not a kite, okay? So you see how you're try you try to make those shapes a parallelogram, again, that's a regular looking parallelogram. This is equal to this, but it's not equal to its neighbor. So when can a parallelogram be a kite? Well, if it's a rhombus or a square. I hope that makes sense for you. All right. Next one, number two, if rectangles must have right angles, and yes, they must, must explain how a rhombus could also be a rectangle. Okay, well, if, if you look at this rhombus, okay, this is not a rectangle. Why? Because a rectangle has to have four right angles. So, if this is a rectangle, it's not a rhombus because a rhombus has to have four equal sides and that has the two sides that are the same and two sides that are not. So explain how a rhombus could also be a rectangle. When it has right angles, okay, and so a rhombus has to have four sides the same length, and so then it's gonna be a square. Really, what you get down to is when it is a square. And that's really your final, final answer, okay? So I have examples of why these things don't mesh, and then when it's a square, that's when a rhombus is a rectangle because a square is a rhombus and it is a rectangle too. Don't you love these? Isn't that fun? Okay, now that you guys are thoroughly confused, draw a rhombus that is also a rectangle on the grid paper. Well, we know what we are stuck with here, okay? A rhombus that is a rectangle, it has to be a square. So you're gonna pick some points that are approximately the same length, we're gonna try our best to, we know we have 90 degree angles, and then square that off. If you want to follow the grid lines, which are actually creating is kind of more of a rectangle, but one, as soon as you go like this, one, two, three, four, and then we, we say, not drawn to scale, haha. -ha. We're using their own description against them. Haha. <laughs> so not drawn to scale. If I call this a matching line to this, this, and this, then it's a square. 
okay? If I was to actually measure it, it would be slightly off because their little grid paper is not, uh, not perfect for squares, but it looks okay on the video. So just put not drawn to scale and then put a one, 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 that would work. Could you put a two, 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 two? Yes, you could, but we're not going to because it would not even have a first line to show the difference between. There we go. Okay, now this one's totally weird. Let's be honest. Um, Kirkland says that figure EFGH, EFGH, is a quadrilateral because it has four points in the same plane. Okay, it's a flat figure and four segments with no three endpoints collinear. Let's just look at this for a while. I'd like to talk to the math people who made this program, and I would like to say, no fifth grader knows what you're talking about. Nobody. Nobody knows what you're talking about. So you can just take that away, take this whole problem away, because everyone's confused. Okay, so explain is there, oh yeah, I've got this, I can explain it because I'm 10 years old. No, nobody can. So what, what the easiest way to talk about this is that you have intersecting lines don't make polygons. Now I can't, um, I can't come up with like a real mathematical description, but what I would say is basically what we have here is two triangles are here, okay? Because you can't have these intersecting lines. All the polygons, if you just look at what we study, if we have a triangle, that's gonna be your smallest one. You've got the three sides, okay? Nothing is crossing over in the middle. Squares, rectangles, rhombus, everything is all about the outside lines and you never have anything intersecting. So that's a big problem. Um, and so the description, this no three endpoints collinear, I had to look up what collinear is because of course I'm not like a math whiz. And so the collinear is uh, all the points would be on the same line. I'm like, well, that, that doesn't, it, that does not help 10 year olds. So it's easier if you just say intersecting lines don't make polygons. What you're creating is now two shapes that have the same vertex point. We do know what vertex points is or are, and that's where things would come together. Edges, outer edges would come together. So intersecting lines don't make polygons. That would be a good enough explanation for me, and I hope it's good enough for your teachers if you're not in my homeroom class. And... Um, explain it away also by saying this could be two triangles that are connected. So they're not quadrilaterals, or it's not a quadrilateral, even though you could count the line segments and call it four, but you cannot have intersecting lines creating one figure. So I uh, hope that's good enough for you guys. Click subscribe, come back again. We'll have more fun on the next video. We'll see you later, and that's it for now. Bye-bye.